Hello everyone, it is Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything or Clueless Gamers and welcome back to another Q&A video. I am a little on edge because I saw a spider in my basement, I tried to get it, I couldn't get it, so it is crawling around here somewhere. I hate bugs, so if this thing comes and attacks me in the middle of this Q&A, if you hear me scream in the middle of it, that is uh, the reason why. I might actually even keep that audio file in here. I'm, I'm on edge, that's all I'm gonna say. But enough about the lost battle with the spider. This is the segment where you guys ask me a bunch of questions. I try to answer as many as I can. Thank you guys in advance for all of the questions. I already know I'm gonna miss a few. I always tend to miss a few. It's just impossible for me to answer every one, and that's really an atonement to you guys. So again, thanks for all the questions. We're gonna start, the video's always titled The Main Talking Point, and I think this is a very interesting point, and and a lot of people have been asking me about this. Is Yuri brainwashed? Has Yuri been brainwashed by this parasite that everyone is uh, brainwashed by? All the girls, at least. Serena, Ruri, and Rin. Yoshi King 2001 for Q&A. I have a theory that Yuri is actually being controlled the same way that the bracelet girls are, for example. Yuri might have been more kind and caring before he got to Duel Academy. Maybe Akaba Leo saw his dueling skills, made him into a perfect soldier. Chip Crusher, I like your videos very much, thank you Chip. For the next Q&A, what if Yuri was also brainwashed with this parasite thing? In episode 117, it's a kid Yuri who looks like a good guy, and now we have this cold-hearted duelist, no you is a bad guy, greetings from Germany. Uh, it's awesome that someone from Germany and, and Europe is watching my channel, but uh, <laughs> greetings Chip. And a bunch of other people have asked me this question, or maybe not in the Q&A format, but have commented and asked me for my opinion on it. And I figured this is a perfect time to get my opinion out there and get the opinion of you guys. So, here's the picture that Chip is referring to. We got it. Revival Zero. What is Revival Zero? Who knows, honestly. But in this picture, Yuri does look pretty genuine. He looks like a nice kid. So here's my thoughts on it. I haven't really given a stance on it. My thoughts are that Yuri is not brainwashed. First of all, do you guys want him to be brainwashed? Do you think that... Uh, to me, that's a cop-out. If he's brainwashed and he's not acting under his own will, and, and the parasite thing is in his mind, and he's being controlled, I feel like that's a cop-out. Yuri, to me, is, I think, genuinely evil. You need a character in Arc 5 that loves what he does, and loves what he does in a villainous way, and Yuri fits that character perfectly. Of course, Yuri's in a difficult position, because we just haven't seen his character very much, but I feel like if all of a sudden you say, yep, a parasite thing's in his brain, he's been controlled this whole time, I just feel like it's a cop-out. So what do you guys think about that? Would you like that, or do you kind of agree with me and think it would be a little lame if that's the case? And whether it's the case or not, here's why I don't think it's the case. I truly think this parasite is a last resort, and here's why. The professor we saw in episode 117 seemed very nervous about the whole thing. Maybe not nervous, but he was hesitant. He was like to the doctor, these girls are important, stop, you know, loving your own parasite because you can't harm these girls, they're essential to my project. I think these parasites were placed in Rin and Ruri and Serena Maybe when Serena was taken back by Barrett and they realized the Lancers were on their way. I think pretty recently, these, I don't think the Parasites were placed in them as soon as they got into Academia. I truly believe that because otherwise, why was Serena not, why did Serena not have this Parasite in her? Why did Sora not have this Parasite in him? Why did Dennis not have this Parasite in him? They don't do it to everyone, and they didn't do it to Serena until they realized she's too much of a threat, she's gonna escape. She's older now, she knows how to get out, she's already escaped, she's already, you know, talked about our plans to the Lancers. We can't take that risk. You know, we can't take that risk with any girls. We're gonna stick these parasites in and we didn't want to do it. Leo Akaba probably didn't want to do it. He seemed very hesitant in 117 about it, but he had no other choice. Even if Yuri was kind-hearted in the early process of his uh, life and tried to escape with Serena, why would they put the parasite in Yuri's brain and not Serena's brain? I, it just, uh, to me, it's just too much inconsistency, but that's what I personally believe about it. I really want to hear the opinion of you guys. That's why I started this Q&A segment with this question, with this topic, because it's extremely relevant to Arc 5 right now. Yuri, I feel like he could be one of my favorite characters, but I, I can't give him that title. I probably can't even say he's a top three character just because we haven't seen him enough. I'm starting to get worried that he's only going to get two or three duels at this point. And if you have this, you know, parasite in him and he's not truly evil, I don't think he's truly evil, but I would like to see a Yuri who enjoys carding people and, and still does get a thrill out of it, 
maybe, I see, I don't know how I would want Yuri redeemed. Probably the way, like, Edo, and Edo, why doesn't Edo have a parasite in him? Why doesn't, why don't the Tyler twins have parasites in them? It's just, it's a last resort method. That's my personal opinion. And now that they know, the Professor knows, the Lancers are coming, Yusho is coming, they know Rin and Ruri, they cannot afford them to escape. What do you do? You stick this bug in them, because if you don't do that, there's no other way to prevent these girls from getting saved unless you have this, you know, device in their brain. That's why Serena's been poisoned. That's probably why Yuzu, not poisoned, that's probably why Yuzu will have this parasite in her, I would imagine. I don't think Yuri has it, I just really don't, but that's my opinion again, I cannot wait to hear your guys' opinion on it, and that's the question where we will start off this Q&A. The Lion Turtle asks, what do you mean you'll start doing manga videos when you get to 1k? Like the original series manga, Arc 5 manga, other spin-off mangas? I haven't read the Zexel one, but all the others, but all the other have been in the range of good to awesome. Well, I'm not going to give away too many spoilers. When I do reach 1,000 subscribers on this channel, which is amazing that it might happen by the end of August, it's just another a testament to you guys. Uh, thank. I mean, I made this channel early July, and it's almost at 1,000, so thank you. Um, it is. It will have to do with all the mangas, and it will... It, there's another series that has to do with something else. I'm not going to give too much away, but I can't wait to announce those two series. I'm not going to give anything away here. The Lion Turtle, I do appreciate you asking. And, uh, but it, all of the mangas will be covered. I, w I will be covering all the mangas in this new series that hopefully I get to do every month. Percy Fowler asks, What do you think the upgrade for Star Venom Fusion Dragon will be like? I think it could be probably the most OP dragon of all the dragons. Uh, Star Venom is extremely overpowered, and we've really only seen Star Venom in true action against those five GX students, so... I really don't know when we're gonna see an upgraded Star Venom. Some people speculate that this Star- that Star Venom is the upgrade and we haven't seen the original, which would kind of be interesting if they went vice versa like that, where they showed us the upgraded version and then cut back to the original. I personally wouldn't like that. I don't really agree with that. I think Star Venom is the original. As to why he has 2800 attack, I really don't know, but I think the upgraded version could be maybe not bright purple, maybe even like bright pink or something like that. Uh, maybe like an extremely feminine color, but a really badass dragon. I, I think it very well could be the most overpowered dragon out of all the dragons we've seen from the 4U boys, and that and that's saying something. Ace Grit asks, do you think Yuzu's mom will show up in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5? Also, do you think she will play a big part in the storyline? Well, that's interesting. Um, that's actually really interesting. I feel like this is a character that Many people haven't really thought up Yuzu's mom because we don't really know much about her. I think it's implied that she passed away or she disappeared. If someone could comment down below if I'm correct on that, that would be great. I, I think it was implied she passed away or she disappeared kind of like Yusho did. I'm not really sure. My favorite Yuzu, Yuzu's mom, Yuzu's dad moment is when Yuzu is crying and asking her dad where she got this, you know, as she said, stupid bracelet. And her dad's like, I don't know, you were just kind of born with it. And Yuzu's just like, I didn't come out of the womb with this bracelet. And I I, I really like that uh, that exchange. But um, yeah, where is Yuzu's mom? And does she play into all this? I don't, I don't know if she'll play a big part in the story. I don't know if she'll be in the story at all. But both of Yuya's parents are. Yuzu's parents and Yuya's parents were good friends. It's just interesting that they haven't... I feel like if she was to play a big part, they would have kind of hinted at it a little more early in the show. I really can't remember them bringing up Yuzu's mom at all. But again, comment down below, because it's been a while since I watched those earlier episodes of Arc 5, so I could very well be wrong about that, but it'll definitely be interesting to see. That is a character that, if she does play a big role, it'll be like, wow, we really, everyone really just kind of overlooked that. So, it's interesting that you, uh, you brought her up. It definitely is. Reiji AK asks, I think Sawatari will make an attempt to go and save Serena, but Yuri will get in his way. I would be very shocked if Sawatari and Yuri do not duel this entire series. Shingo dueled each counterpart but him, and it seems like the writers are kind of setting it up so his last duel will be against Yuri where he gets carded. We know he will lose to Yuri, and that's when he could give this really cool speech and would showcase his character development, similar to how Tetsuo, who was pretty much useless for most of Zexel, had his really cool moment when he lost to Ryo Mirage. I really do believe Sawatari will try to play the hero, try to rescue Serena, and it will all be ruined by Yuri resulting in him getting carded, but getting his really cool moment, do you think this could happen? Uh, Reiji, I actually completely agree with you 100%. In fact, I said this pretty much word for word 
in the previous Q&A, in Q&A number 5, so if you want to go back and check that out, because I did go into a little more detail on that, but this situation, I really do think it's going to happen, and Shingo could very well get a uh, get a cool moment if that if it does happen this way. Chris Mitchell asks, if the Bracelet Girls act as a seal on the U-Boys, what do you think of the idea that corrupting, brainwashing the girls would make that seal easier to break? Anyone else, please give your thoughts. I'm curious about what people think. That's interesting. I don't think it would make that... I See, here's why I don't think it would make the seal easier to break. Because I think the true power is in the bracelets. And even if you brainwash the girls, the bracelets' effect will not change. I, I, there's no correlation that we know of that links the parasites to the bracelets' changing effects. So it is interesting to say that maybe the girls getting brainwashed and getting weaker would make the seal easier to break and let the U-Boys kind of run free in Berserk mode. But I really think the true power is in the bracelet, so I don't think it would make it easier to break. I guess we don't know all the effects of this parasite thing yet, which, by the way, is gross. I hate bugs, as you know from my spider intro. I just don't like that parasite. I keep thinking of it crawling up Serena's ear. I'm actually starting to get nauseous. So we don't know all the all the effects of it, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. But no, I personally don't think the seal it will be easier to break. Christian Dennison, what are your thoughts on Academia's attack in Standard during the Battle Royal compared to the attack in Synchro? Well, the Battle Royal was more... I, I thought they were kind of similar, except in Synchro... Actually, no, they were pretty much both going after Serena and Yuzu in the Battle Royal and in Synchro. I think Reiji feared that during the Battle Royal, if the Lancers couldn't hold off, if I remember correctly, again, it was a while back, if they couldn't hold off uh, Academia, then Academia would be able to destroy the whole city. I think that was Reiji's main concern. They didn't really go for that in Synchro. They were mo mainly focused on getting Yuzu and Serena, which was the goal I guess that was the goal of Yuri, though, to bring back Yuzu. Maybe Academia was trying to destroy Standard. I, I, again, please comment down below. But if that's the case, Academia's attacks on Standard seemed more vicious. The attacks on Synchro seemed more planned, if that makes any sense. Vicious, planned. Uh, they don't really... They're not really opposites, but I, I hope you guys uh, get what I mean. Optic Slayer asks, My question is, what was Dennis's last words before he carded himself? For example, Rua's last words... Were ancient fairy dragon, please protect Ruka, right when he died in 5Ds. Well, Dennis's last words, uh, quote for quote, again, these are translated, so they might not be 100% accurate, but I, I think they're pretty accurate, was just, it's an illusion, watch my final trick as I turn myself into a card. It was something along those lines. And I think he said it's an illusion to calm the, the viewers, the audience down, and by the audience, I mean the audience on the ship, that probably would have had a heart attack if the if he just carded himself, and they were just like, what the hell just happened? By him saying it was an illusion, it looks like a magic trick, they probably don't think twice about it, but you show Asuka and Kaido know that he killed himself, or carded himself, unless it was an illusion, and maybe he didn't card himself, I don't believe that, but if you take it literally, that's, that's what it means. Uh, definitely a sad scene, and uh, maybe it's the first of many to be carded in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Anna Draws asks, first question, do you think we will see a tag duel with Edo and Shun versus Academia? I don't. It would be cool, but I, I just, I don't. Now, well, now we know Edo split off and he's going with Yugo, so I don't see Edo and Shun versing uh, Academia. Second question, did you think that Edo will meet with the Professor? And if yes, what do you think will be their reactions? Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe Edo will meet with Yusho or not, I don't know. Well, that's interesting. Edo very well could face the Professor. I would love to see Edo and Asuka versus the Professor. That's probably not going to happen. I'm not saying it will happen. It would be cool to see. I, I don't know who Edo is going to verse. To be honest, I I'm not going to lie. I don't really, I don't lie about really much that I say. I thought Edo's character was kind of dead. I really thought he was going to get stuck in Heartland, and I'm really glad that he's back. So I really don't know what to make of Edo, because personally, I thought his character died in Arc 5 after, and by died I mean he just wouldn't have any important role, but it looks like he's back, all the returning characters are back, so it'll be interesting uh, to see his role, will he meet with the Professor, if he does it's probably not going to end well, <laughs> it's probably not going to end well for him, but we'll see, it's, it's definitely an interesting topic. Third question, how was your vacation? Well my vacation was great, thank you for asking Anna, it's always nice to just get away and relax, I went to uh, the Poconos, Pennsylvania with 
you don't live in the United States. It's basically just like a, a big forest ski mountain area. It's my friend has a house up there and stayed there for a week or so. And it's just, it's always nice to get away. It's very peaceful, uh, peaceful up there. And when you're with good friends, it's always, uh, it's always fun. So thank you for asking, Anna. Anyways, I just want to say you're awesome and I love your work. And you must really love my work if you put that many O's and you put it in capitals. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Anna. You've been a, a big supporter of the channel for a while. So appreciate the questions. Shinjiro, do you think Brainwashed Yuzu will card Sora in which Yuya will duel her to break her free? You know, when I talked about in the podcast Yuya vs. Brainwashed Yuzu, a bunch of you commented and said, no, I'd much rather see Sora vs. Brainwashed Yuzu, and I, did, I honestly didn't even think of that, and I do, again, that's why I love making these videos, because you guys comment things, and I'm like, wow, that's a good idea. I would love to see this duel, and I would love to see this play out, where a Brainwashed Yuzu card Sora... Maybe even sending Yuya into Berserk, and you have this really great duel between those two. It was foreshadowed in the second episode when Yuzu said, I'm going to play the heel, and you're going to play the good guy. That very well could happen. And when a lot of you said, I'd much rather see Yuzu versus Sora, I'd rather see both of them. If Sora falls a little short, Yuzu defeats her master, because Sora was the one who taught her fusion. It would be kind of ironic if Yuzu defeats Sora... And Sora says, wow, you finally mastered your training. Yuzu cards him. That would be a pretty sad series of events. And then Yuya steps in and to break her free. I really... What do you guys think about that? Because I really would love to see that play out. I think it would be a great duel for Sora. I don't know what Sora is going to do at this point in the show. I think this would actually be a great route for the show to go with these characters. Full Metal Predaking X asks, What do you think if Yugo actually beat Yuri in their duel? I know everyone is excited for it, but what if Yugo actually beats Yuri, ends up getting absorbed into Yugo, but instead of being like Yudo, is with Yuya, he actually starts corrupting Yugo and forcing him to side with Academia. What are your thoughts? That's very interesting. Um, here's the thing. I mean, I've said it multiple times. I don't think... Who even knows if this duel's gonna happen, honestly? I'm starting to get annoyed. I really... I just want to see... These two have like a two, three episode duel. I don't know if it's going to happen. I, the, I know the opening alluded to it, and I know the opening d is not always accurate. I'm aware of that. But in other times, the opening is pretty accurate, so you just don't know what to make of it. But who knows if this duel will happen. If it happens, and if Yugo wins, which I'd be surprised, and absorbs Yuri. Again, I don't see why he would absorb Yuri, which is similar to why I don't see why Yuri would absorb Yugo. But let's just say it happens for argument purpose. Yuri probably would try to corrupt Yugo and force him to side with Academia. That, I really like that a lot. Now, there's a lot of ifs there. The main if is if they're even going to duel. Then Yugo would have to win and willingly absorb Yuri because Yuya and Yuto willingly absorbed, you know, Yuya willingly absorbed Yuto. So I don't see that happening, but it would be actually very interesting to watch if, like, you kind of see Yugo getting turned from the inside out from literally the inside out. So, yeah, it's, in, again, a lot of ifs for that scenario to happen, but it's always fun to speculate, and I, it would be very interesting to see that. Franklin Cipher asks, Do you think that Gongenzika, Sawatari, Kaido, and Yuga will be brainwashed to fight for Academia instead of Gongenzika and Sawatari being carded? Well, I don't know about Kaido, but I don't. I, I really don't, because, again, I don't think this brainwashing, this parasite thing, I think it's really a last resort, now, could something like that happen? I think of, like, uh, Honda or Tristan from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! when Bakora in Season 5 ended up kind of, like, possessing him. So, a good friend, it's not uncommon to see that in Yu-Gi-Oh! But I, I don't think it would happen. I think, also, I would rather see them get carded. There's too many characters, and I don't want Gungenzaga and Shingo to duel as villains because I don't see a threat with them. That's the problem. Gungenzaga and Shingo have not been built up really greatly recently. I think everyone can agree on that. I even see people who comment like, man, I love Shingo, I love Gongenzika. Why don't they get screen time? And I, I just say, I don't know. I really don't know why they... And when they do get screen time, they get they lose. They lose. So we'll see this 5v5 duel in 118, which I'm recording this before 118, by the way. It airs in two and a half hours right now. So you'll probably see... Well, you'll definitely see it after 118 airs. I don't know anything about 118. Hasn't aired yet, so if 118 could answer any of these questions, I won't know that. But I'd rather see them get carded, and there's just too many characters right now. It would be interesting. I'd, if Yugo gets brainwashed, again, I like that. But to take four or five characters and do it, I feel like it would be overkill. But what do you guys think about that? Would you rather see them turn villainous? Um, personally, I wouldn't, but 
I'll let you guys in the comments answer that. Flash Greninja, Q&A number six. Do you think we will see a Yuri vs. Edo duel? I don't think that Leo Akaba will let Edo get away with betraying Academia, so I think a duel between Yuri and Edo will be really good. It would be really good. The problem is, you'd have to probably assume Edo would lose, and, well, then again, who is Edo going to duel, honestly, one-on-one, -on -one, get screen time, and beat? I don't think he's going to duel anyone. So, Edo might not get to win the entire series, which is just kind of it's funny and sad at the same time. I would love to see it, but at this point, I would love to see Yuri versus anyone. It, you see, does Leo Akaba care enough to go after Edo, or is he too focused on his main goal at this point? Because here's the thing, sure, he's not happy with Edo, but he's got Yusho and Asuka. He's got the Lancers. Now he's got maybe even Yugo and Edo, and, and Shun and Kaido all coming after him. They're all coming after him. Obviously, Shun and Kaido, probably after the Ruri situation gets resolved, Yugo and Edo, I assume, are going to start heading towards the main building. So is he going to single out Edo? Probably not. But... You know, what's he really going to do? There's too many, there's so many characters right now, I really don't know what's going to happen. Yuri vs. Edo would be awesome, but I, I don't think it'll happen. But we'll see. I just want to see Yuri duel, honestly. Different Dimension Otaku. I think a reason now, this is just a thought for the dub, but a reason why they don't do romance is because they want it to be a kids and young boys and girls might find the opposite sex gross or something. That's just opinion. Also, I think it's more about the trading card, if you ask me. It absolutely is about the trading card, first and foremost. I will never deny that, and I think to be a fan of the show, you have to admit it's about dueling. It's about action. It's not about romance. But, at the same time... If you add romance to a video game, if you add romance to a movie, to a TV show, to an anime, it can enhance said anime or TV show. So, even though this is about trading cards, which it absolutely is, I think you'd have to be crazy to try to make Yu-Gi-Oh! a romance show, you can still utilize romance to enhance emotions and en enhance audience relations with certain characters that I don't think they've ever done before. Interestingly enough... You guys pointed it out, another reason why, you know, you guys always point these things out. I said there's never been an on-air kissing scene in Yu-Gi-Oh! I was wrong. Yuma's sister and that gambler guy who looks like a complete, don't get me started, actually did kiss on screen in Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. So funny enough, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel was the show that brought us our first on-screen uh, kiss, the only one that's happened. So they have done it before, which was very interesting to me. Of course, Yuma's sister older character, more mature character, so it kind of makes sense that they would do it for them and not maybe a Yuma and Katori, but, you know, they have done romance before, not well, they have done it, 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 they've never done it well, because the girl character always suffers, but, I mean, that could be a reason, the dub especially, the dub censored that kissing scene, for whatever reason, probably because, again, it's for younger audiences, and, you know, I guess a girl and a boy kissing is taboo or whatever, which is a little crazy, but that, that you probably are right about that different dimension. Sayaka Ishigo Kamishiro, 117 episode is going to be called The Sinister Bell's Chime or Treacherous Toll. Do you think it's because of Rin's name? Because in Japanese, Rin is the sound that a bell makes instead of ring. Well, we saw 117. This was asked beforehand. Figured I would answer it anyway. Could be why. Sometimes they do an they do name these episodes kind of uh, ironically. That's not the right word, but I hope you guys know what I mean. Where the episode name has something to do with something on screen. So maybe Rin, Rin, yeah, I guess I could see that being a bell sound. So, yeah, it very well could be. Well, here's a question from Rex Raptor. You can pause it if you want. The longer questions I just, I won't read out loud because I, it's a, uh, it's just for time restraints, so I do apologize for that. But the question basically asks, does Yuya's pendulum hold something important? Is it the key to unlocking Odd Eyes and maybe the Magician's final forms slash powers? Maybe it is. I've talked about the pendulum quite a few times on these Q&A segments, and I feel horrible because I always say the same thing. I don't know what the pendulum could mean. I do believe there is a deeper meaning, because when he's in berserk mode, the pendulum lights up. There is something with the pendulum. As for it to be the key to unlocking the final odd eyes, that could be more of the U-Boys all forming together. Genesis Omega Dragon, cough, cough. But... At the same time, is the pendulum the reason that they can all merge, to, that Yuya can merge with other people and absorb people? If that's the key, then technically, yes, the pendulum is the key. So, I really don't know, but I would definitely suggest pausing this right here, reading the question, and, and commenting down below, because it, it is interesting. What do you guys think about the pendulum? I, I really just, 
have no idea what it could mean at this point. If it has a deeper meaning than what meets the eye, which I do think it does. Mr. Cesar asks, who do you think Yusho's gonna duel? Akabaleo? Maybe Yuri? What do you think? Akabaleo. He, him and Asuka are headed to verse Akabaleo, unless he has to duel the Doctor, which maybe will happen. Maybe the Doctor and Leo Akaba verse Akaba Leo and Asuka tag duel. I don't think that would happen, but I don't know what Asuka would do. I think Akaba Leo is going to duel Yusho. It would be interesting if he duels Yuri, but what do you guys think about that? Who is Yusho going to duel? I think I messed up. I meant, I think Yusho will duel Akaba Leo. Would be cool to see him duel Yuri. Yuri versus Leo. Maybe that'll happen too, but uh, you guys know what I mean. Phoenix Dragon, do you think Pendulum Summons are broken in the metagame? Uh, I'll leave that to the comments below. I personally don't play in real life. I've heard a lot of complaints about pendulums. I've also heard they've gotten nerfed in recent uh, months, in recent uh, the year or so, where they're not as strong as they used to be and they're kind of fairer now. Uh, that's not what I'm claiming. That's just what I see on various forums and on the comments below. That is a question for you guys, please, that play the game, and I know most of you do. Are Pendulum Summons broken? I've seen some people say Pendulums ruin the game, so please let me know and answer that question down below, because I'm, I'm curious as well to what you guys think, uh, how the Pendulums affect the real-life game. Skyler, love these videos, man. I hope you stick with them. Thank you. I have another Q&A for you. I think you've talked about it before. Would you ever do a top 10 saddest moments in any Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, possibly with the clips attached? Also, do you have any other top 5 to 10 lists planned anytime soon? Well, thank you for the question. So here's the thing. I don't do top 10 lists because with the clips, they would take way too long. They take about 25 to 30 minutes, which would just be way too difficult for me to make a script of that, of that caliber, get the clips. And also, the clips are really risky, guys. On Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, I'm not going to use any clips. And if the reviews move to this channel, which they might, if Clueless Gamers goes... I, would, I won't use the clips like I do in the beginning of the reviews. I won't use them in the top five lists anymore. If the clips do leave, I will turn the top five villains, top five saddest moments into top ten lists. So that will kind of make up for it. The problem with clips is even though you are allowed because of fair use to use 15 to 20 second clips, even up to 30 seconds, I believe, if TV Tokyo sees it, like my Seto Kaiba video, I had no clips longer in that Kaiba video than 20 seconds. If they see it, they will claim it. I fought it with YouTube. Fair use doesn't matter. And that's the risk. And that's why on this channel, I do not want to have any issues with copyright. I will not use clips. I enjoy the clips because it's a break from me talking. Gives you guys something to watch but I might not be able to use them in the future. I'll keep doing them with the reviews on Clueless Gamers and the top five lists on there, but if those reviews and those lists ever do move to this channel, I'm just giving you guys a forewarning. I will not be able to use clips. I do apologize for that. I hope that's not a, a massive turnoff. Again, I'll turn those lists into top 10 lists so there's more content there. To answer, So to answer your next question, I do actually this week or next weekend within... It's eight to nine days, another top five list. I won't say what it is. It has to do with characters. I won't say what it is, but it will come out within the next eight to nine days. So thank you for asking, Skylar. And you guys let me know what you think about using clips. If I don't use clips, would you rather see me do top tens with no clips or keep doing top fives with clips? Or would you guys... I'm sure you guys would understand why I can't use clips and why I won't use clips on this channel because it's just too much of a risk. So... I do apologize, and I'll get further into that down the road if it does become a serious issue. JN1306, do you think Yuri could be Sora's brother? There is a scene in episode 36 or 37 where Sora has a facial expression extremely to those we typically see from Yuri. Keep it up. Thank you, JN. You're referring to the Shun duel. I'm almost positive. Uh, when he dueled Shun, he lost his mind. I don't think so. I think maybe they know each other. It seems like, I mean, if Captain Solo knows Sora, everyone knows everyone in Academia. So Yuri and Sora were probably trained as two elite duelists. Maybe Yuri was held in a bit of a higher class. I don't think they're related at all. I think Sora back then was just extremely twisted, and that's why the facial expression seemed very similar. So this is an interesting question. If you could give Yu-Gi-Oh! to another company, who would it be and how would they improve the game? Well, you know, I probably... Uh, what do you guys think about this? This is a difficult one. I kind of want to say Nintendo, 
just because I've seen what they've done to the Pokemon uh, franchise. They've turned that so mainstream, and Nintendo, while sure the consoles have been disappointing in recent years, I mean, I've Nintendo 64, GameCube, Wii, I even have the Wii U, I have one game for it, I was hoping for a lot more, just nothing's come out. They really, even though they dominated with the 64 and GameCube, have fallen behind in the console race. I still trust Nintendo, they have a lot of funds, and I feel like they would tr- be able to, they'd at least be able to sell Yu-Gi-Oh! merchandise, and just make Yu-Gi-Oh! I think a bit more mainstream, they are a Japanese-based company, I would keep it obviously in Japanese in Japan, excuse me. I don't really know any other Japanese companies, so I'll probably just go with Nintendo, and they'd improve it by just making it a lot more mainstream, maybe making a decent video game. But what do you guys... I know people have a lot of issues with Nintendo. I myself have a few gripes with them, but uh, what do you guys think about that? What company would you give Yu-Gi-Oh! to if uh, Konami ever sold it or released it from their clutches? Akaba Reiji asks, Here's another fun question, Dylan. I wanted to know what type of music and visuals... Would you like to see for the last opening and ending of Arc 5? You can use all Yu-Gi-Oh! openings and endings as examples for easier explanation. At first, I wanted a braving type of opening. This news drops, ruins all my hopes and dreams, <laughs> because it is a boy band. Uh, it's a really good question. The, the, hmm. The last, the ending, see, I want very upbeat endings. I thought this ending, the song was great. The visuals to me were just, they were boring, honestly. I, I loved the song. I thought the visuals were lazy. I know some people praised it and said it gave that calm sense and it was nice and serene, but personally, you're fighting an interdimensional war. I kind of want a, you know, an ending where it's like, it's just more sadder than that. I thought it could have been calm, but sad. That was more calm and, like, upbeat. I just wasn't a big fan of the ending five visuals. The song was great. Music, I mean, the music in Arc 5 has been great. I would love... I'm not going to really go into much about the ending because we don't know who's doing the ending, but the opening, if it was anything like Burn, I would love that a lot. And you mentioned that in your comments down here. I feel like I can't pick that because you used it as your example and I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to just copy. You know, a, a visuals that I loved were Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal Soul Drive, the third opening. I like those visuals a lot. Visuals similar to that, similar to Going My Way, as you said, where it's just very upbeat and um, where the song is upbeat, but at the same time, the visuals kind of get you pumped. The the ending of that, the, the visuals in uh, Soul Drive was kind of Yuma, like looking very small, where you have you know, Dr. Faker on one side and you have Tron on the other looking extremely menacing, so the threat is there. That That's kind of an opening that I would go for, but what do you guys think about that? We know we have a new opening and ending in October. What are kind of visuals that you want to see? Do you like those calmer endings or do you want a more sad, uh, powerful kind of ending? Even though I know endings usually aren't as active as the openings, obviously. This question was asked via Twitter. Meryl Elizabeth Key. Hey Dylan, what do you think about Yuna be the female lead of the six series? And a male character Yuna have a crush on? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I would... If I had to pick one thing, it would be a female character leading the sixth show. I really, really would love to see that. Now, would... Here's, here's the thing, though. I would not want her to have a crush on a male character. I have no issue... If the male character, who's her best friend, who would replace, I guess, the typical female uh, character, has a crush on her, and maybe way down the road, like towards the end of the show, she she shows signs of maybe romantic feelings or something along those lines, signs of interest, because if she has a crush on him, the, her, her best friend, that always seems to ruin the girls in Yu-Gi-Oh!, I mean, we saw what happened with Aki in 5Ds. I love Aki as a character. She's one of my favorite female characters. But, admittedly, she didn't do much down the road. We're seeing it now with Yuzu. And I feel like it's almost a curse when female characters have crushes on male characters. So, I wouldn't want her to have any crushes. I'd have no issue with the male character having a crush on her. But, that's just my opinion on it. I would, again, either or, just love a female character to be the lead if there is a sixth show, because so far nothing's been announced about a new series. Blader asks, What if Arc 5 decides to redeem Yuri by having Selina duel him, and therefore their connection is established? Do you think that Yuri and Selina will ever have the same chemistry that the other three pairs do? That way the symmetry between all four Yuya and Yuzu counterparts is complete, 
and the fusion power monopoly dies down back to normal or something. Well, it, that is interesting. Now, do Yuri and Selena have a relationship? I guess this goes back to the title of the video. Some people think they did. The parasite erased his memories, and that's why he doesn't remember any relationships with Serena. But then, why doesn't Selena remember any relationships with him? You know, Selena has never talked about him positively, unless Selena's memory was wiped as well. I'm not sure. I think they just were separated, honestly. And I, I really, I can't see it happening. I just can't. Um, but what do you guys think about that? Are you, again, I'd love to see Yuri duel anyone. Do you think it's, it definitely is weird that Yuri and Selena don't have a relationship, but, or even it seems they have angst towards each other, especially when they had that interaction during 91, right before Yuri dueled Yugo, I believe it was. So, yeah, is there a reason? Maybe, maybe not. I guess we'll, uh, time will tell with that one. Lego with Peter, what is your favorite opening theme, English and Japanese? It could be character theme or opening theme. My favorite character theme is Yusei's theme. Not gonna give away my favorite opening theme, I am gonna do a top list on that in the future. Do you think Zexel and GX is underrated? I do, I, I mean they're, you know, I'm not gonna say where they are in my top five favorite shows because when you talk about your favorite shows, that just leads to hate in the comment section amongst each other, it doesn't even, not even to me directly, but someone will say, oh, 5Ds is great, someone else will say 5Ds sucked, that person will say Zexel sucked, and then, you know, uh, burn in hell, I mean, these are literally terms that I've seen, which is just, I mean, come on, it's a little, it's a little crazy, but I enjoyed all the shows, and Zexel and GX, sure, they get hate, they probably get the hate, the most hate out of all the shows, it's not warranted, it's really not, um, I'm not going to get into detail on why I think they get that kind of hate, but yes, they, they are underrated. They're, they're really not bad shows, in my opinion. Margolin Kantgan. Hi, Dylan. I have some questions for you. A lot of these questions were before 117. The only one that I can really answer that wasn't already answered was number two. What is your favorite opening, not only in Arc 5, but from other seasons, or will there be a top opening for each season? Yes, I will be doing a top openings and endings for all the Yu-Gi-Oh's where I'm going to analyze every single opening and ending theme we have gotten, so stay tuned for that. Arc 5 is Arc Area Project and 5 Dimensions, first being Standard, Synchro, Xyz, Fusion, and the fifth being the 4 Dimensions Mixed. That is interesting, but the 5th Dimension wouldn't, it doesn't exist, or the first 4 Dimensions wouldn't exist without the 5th one. Ah, uh, that's, that's confusing me. I, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Probably not. Um, again, I don't think there is a fifth dimension, but is the fifth dimension the four dimensions mixed? But if the fifth dimension existed, there wouldn't be five dimensions. There would be one dimension, because the other four would be gone, if that makes any sense. So, I'm not sure if it's true, but who knows what the Arc Area Project is, honestly. So, five dimensions, possibly. Again, I'm, I'm sticking with no, but... I've been wrong in the past, as you guys know, so <laughs> we'll see. Fat Snorlax, hey dude, love your videos, thank you so much. My question is, have you seen the Arc 5 English dub, and if so, what do you think of it? If not, do you plan to see it at some point? I've seen clips, uh, it's alright, you know, I, I personally don't hate on people who watch the dub. I, I don't have any issue with people who watch the dub. I personally cannot watch the English dub anymore. I, I just, it, it's too cringy for me. Um... People that do watch the dub, I'm not trying to insult you guys in any way. As you know, I have just as much respect for you if you've watched every dubbed episode and have not seen one episode in sub. That's fine. I don't have an issue with that. Sometimes they, they change the storyline a bit, but that's fine. Because um, I grew up on the dub, so I kind of understand that. But now that I've watched it in its original format, I, I can't watch the dub. So I don't know if I plan to see it at some point. That's just me personally. Maybe if I get bored, especially if there's no sixth show, which I'm starting to get nervous. I really hope they announce something soon that I maybe I will go back and, and watch the entire dub, but not until it's fully out. Like right now, it's so far behind. I would have to wait until it's fully out. Joe Chapman, what if the bracelet girls are a seal or key to open the darkness in Yuya? And that's why the professor needs the girls so he can use the darkness to combine the dimensions. I forgot my other questions I had, but you have not answered them yet, but it's fine. I apologize, Joe. Again, I get so many, not only questions, but so many comments that YouTube just flushes a lot of them out, and when I go to search for them, half of them show up, half of them don't, so I apologize that I missed yours. I apologize if I missed anyone's, as, as always. It's possible. I do think that the Bracelet Girls are a seal to that darkness, and maybe it's a key. Yeah, maybe 
he needs all of them to get the U-Boys in Berserk. I think that's very possible. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. I don't know what else I can really say about it, but I, I do kind of agree with that, that there is definitely some connection between the Bracelet Girls, Berserk Mode, the four U-Boys, and the darkness inside Yuya. LT Revolution. Dylan, did you know that Crow Hogan uses the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh's favorite deck? Black Wings is his favorite archetype, and the main reason Crow is a recurring character, so they can give him more Black Wings to make. It kind of explains why he left the Synchro Dimension to help Yuya, even though he was really out of place. What's your opinion on this? Now, are you referring to Takahashi, the, the main Yu-Gi-Oh creator, or the 5D's creator, Ono, who I think is the Arc 5 creator? I might be wrong about that. It would make a lot more sense, I guess, if it is the 5D's creator. I pers I know that Crow was supposed to be a villain, but because of how popular Black Wings are, Crow's not a villain, obviously, and um, that was back in 5D's. A little plug for my Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Things You Missed, Things You Didn't Know video. My opinion on it is just Black Wings sell, and as long as Black Wings keep selling, they're gonna have Crow appearing. So for you Crow fans out there, as I can see is your, uh, your picture, you don't have to worry about him him losing screen time. He's going to be in this 5v5 duel, so, uh, you know, I don't really have too much of an opinion on it. It is a cool little fun fact, though, that the creator of, I'm assuming, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's favorite deck is is Black Wings. King Zunami, seeing how you've talked in one of your previous Q&As about Reaver's possible role about a double agent, do you think that his CCCs could reference that role, how they observe and copy the opponent's monsters and then use that information against them instead of just being a less appealing version of Reiji's DDDs. Wow, that was good. That was really good. How they observe and copy and then use, wow, that just blew my mind. I did not think about that at all. I do think something funky is going on with Rira, and that just blew my mind. G great job, really. Really, to all of you guys that ask questions and, and come up with things like this, you you just I, I feel like I can I, I'm thinking about all and you guys know me I'm a very outside the box thinker I'm thinking about all these different angles and possibilities just impossible for one person to think about every single possibility which is why I love doing these that would be perfect that his monster pretty much sums up what he could be in the Lancers for. Now, is he a double agent? I don't know. I personally think he very well could be. What do you guys think about this? But, man, if that's the case, what a foreshadow and what a reference. And great job catching it because I have not heard about that that theory at all. But it just kind of backs up my point that something strange is going on with Rira. So that is, uh, that is definitely really, really interesting. All right, guys. Well, that about wraps it up. If I missed any of your questions, I am so sorry. Follow me on Twitter. Message me on Twitter. Message me on Instagram. You have a better chance of getting in this video by doing it because the YouTube comments are just so flooded. I try to answer as many as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching this if you stay tuned the entire way. It really means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed. When you're watching this, the Arc 5 episode 118 has already aired. The 118 review should be out probably in a few hours, within 12 hours, I'm assuming, on my Clueless Gamers channel, so stay tuned for that. I can't wait to hear what you guys thought of the episode. I don't even know what I thought of the episode yet because <laughs> it hasn't come out. No spider attack. It's still lurking around here somewhere, but I have not seen it, so we made it through this video with no spider attack. The sixth Q&A, I'd say it was a pretty good, uh, <laughs> a pretty good Saturday night of recording, so please subscribe, like the video, comment down below any any of these questions and comment any more questions you might have for me in the number seven q and a video thank you guys as always so much for watching have a great day i will see you next time